Welcome back. In East Africa, Kenya's Court of Appeal has dismissed a lower court's ruling that stopped the printing of presidential ballot papers over alleged problems with the way the tender was awarded to a Dubai-based firm, Al Goria. The High Court had ruled that there should be, have been public participation in the tender process. But the appellate judges believe that the High Court erred in finding that the public participation is a requirement in direct tendering. The judges also say that the High Court had not considered that the election is now just a few weeks away. The election is scheduled to hold on August the 8th. Meanwhile, the Kenyan government has ordered the immediate testing of about half a million people in the food handling business in the next 21 days after four people were confirmed to have died of cholera in the capital since May. A hotel and a popular restaurant in Nairobi have been shut to control the spread of the disease. At least 79 people with confirmed cases of cholera have received treatment in various Nairobi hospitals and authorities are setting up 10 more treatment centers to cope with the outbreak. So what we are seeing is an outbreak which is widely spread. So far, 381 patients have been seen, not recently, since, the time, since May, since April, towards the end of April. At the moment, Kenyatta National Hospital has 101 patients, 67 uh, of whom are here and have been confirmed to have cholera. And of course, we won't go into the details of what type of cholera because it seems is one strain of cholera which is affecting all these patients. We have so far closed two hotels, Jacaranda and Valencia, and we shall continue to do so if there is evidence that there is risk to the public. Campaigns have kicked off in Rwanda, where President uh, Paul Kagame will run for a third term on August the 4th against Frank Habineza of the opposition Democratic Green Party and independent Felipe Mpayimana. Kagame, who is widely admired for restoring stability to the East African nation after its 1994 genocide, was held, has held power for the last 17 years. The ruling Rwanda Patriotic Front, RPF, launched the re-election campaign for its leader, President Paul Kagame, on Friday, July the 14th, with a rally in Ruhanga, the heartland of his support base and the capital city, Kigali. Kagame, who's running for a third term after Rwandans voted overwhelmingly to support changes to the constitution that would allow him to extend his term in office, has been president since the year 2000, but effectively in control since his rebel force marched into Kigali in 1994 to end the genocide. He is widely admired for restoring stability to the East African nation and presiding over a rapid economic growth and creating a relatively corrupt free government. Kagame will run against the opposition Democratic Green Party's Frank Habineza, whose platform includes investing in agriculture, increasing salaries for the security forces, and ending political detentions. There is also an independent candidate, Felipe Mpaimana, but Mr. Kagame is widely expected to retain his seat. They, the journalists, are writing and saying that the elections in Rwanda are not important because it is already known who is going to win. Me, I am proud that the result is already known. Despite being poor in resources, Rwanda is a rising star in Africa for donors and investors and Kagame has been feted as a visionary leader, an African icon. However, Activists say development has come at the expense of civil liberties and media freedoms. The president is also accused by critics of being authoritarian and trampling on political freedoms. Some of his political opponents have been killed after they fled abroad in cases that remain unsolved. The government denies any involvement. Gatete Ngiringabo is a blogger and political commentator in Rwanda. When you call someone a dictator, it's very subjective thing. Um, how do you define a dictator? Um, is there citizen participation in decision making in Rwanda? Yes, there is. 
Is there a community um, assessment of leaders? Yes, there is. Uh, do we have independent judiciary? Do we have a parliament? Do we have uh, institutions that work? Yes, there is. So when you say someone's a dictator, unless you set up your own definition of a dictator, Rights groups say the government and the ruling RPF have become increasingly intolerant of dissent and criticism. The Democratic Green Party is the only registered opposition party in the country. Well, finally on the program, Nigeria's former president, Tolisha Gwambasunya, and his co-authors of the book, Making Africa Work, are all set to embark on a book tour across West Africa to promote the work, which is a handbook for Africa's economic success. Now, the French versions of the book was launched at the residence of the French ambassador in Pretoria, South Africa's capital, last night. The authors say that they were not blind to the persistent challenges in Africa. This is a good time to take responsibility, own and solve the problems. Our Johannesburg Bureau Chief Betty Divya reports. Making Africa Work recognizes Africa's doubling population of mostly young people living in urban cities and connected to the world via mobile devices. And it's a guide to improving Africa's capacity for economic growth and job creation. There's a premium on knowing what not to do. Lots of, there are lots of development plans uh, uh, in Africa. Uh, in most every five years, most countries uh, create development plans. We read a lot of them in the process of writing this book, believe me, they spend about a third of their content listing things to do, or listing goals and objectives, and not actually providing the how, the how to translate ideas into action on the ground. The 317-page book, complete with crib notes and even a song, for those blessed with a shorter attention span, has received a lot of praise. But cynics say a lot still has to be said about Africa's leaders not being held to account and corruption on so many levels. The thrust of the book is not just listing out what is wrong with Africa or who has been wrong or who is wrong in Africa. If it's a blame game, um, you will blame the dead and the living. Uh, that's not the, what we have chosen to do in this. We have chosen to look for, on the positive side, what are things that have worked, what are examples of success in Africa, and not only in Africa, we go as far as Singapore and across as far as uh, uh, Colombia and to see and identify what has worked. And we are not saying that anybody should take these things that have worked lock, stock and barrel. I think it's, um, it's, it's a very interesting um, base for for, for, for all of us uh, to think about uh, the, the current situation of Africa and its future. The English and French versions of Making Africa Work and its authors will be touring West Africa. Hopefully, policymakers and implementers will take a leaf or two and bring positive change to a fast changing continent. From Pretoria, South Africa, Betty Divia, Channels Television News. That's Network Africa. Thank you for watching. I'm Jocker Rogers.